Howdy y'all. We got the Bulldog on the channel. What we got here is a 2013 Toyota Highlander, 3.5 engine. Come in with a little bit of a gravelly noise and we've already diagnosed it. What we did, we took the serpentine belt off down there. We took the serpentine belt off down there and started the engine, the noise went away. Oh, you can't see me moving that. Just trust me, water pump's bad. It moves a little bit and it's got a gravel, gravelly noise in it when it spins. Now, book time on this job is high, really high. Two different times, one that's really high, one of them that's still high for a water pump, but manageable. What's the difference? Well, one includes pulling the motor out. All right, fine. Well, we're gonna do it without pulling the motor. I've never done one of these before. Watch a couple videos on it. It seems fairly straightforward. We'll make one on here just so that everybody can see how I did it. Now, step by step, I've already got antifreeze going out. I got the side cover off down there because it's easier to take the belt off from the bottom than it is trying to do it up top. Uh, you can pull this out, but still, bottom's easier now we're going to pull this mount out here and this mount underneath of it will really open things up however there's not enough room between the sides to get that out i'll show you why all right this mount's loose now you got to get these bolts out which they're long as a hay rope that's convenient now them bolts down there they're supposedly can't come out but say you can Wiggle them up through the AC lines. There, that can come out. Now the other one. Not sure if it's gonna come or not. Oh, I'll probably have to flex the lines down just a little bit. There we go. Slip through. Nice. Uh, those engineers that are so much smarter than me did this. I hope you step on a Lego. Back to work. Okay. I've now got this stupid bracket moved at an orientation where this is how you get it out. You back this bolt up between the two AC brackets and you wiggle it around and pull up on it and get it to slide back in towards there. And, and then you kill the fatted calf and smear some blood on the wall. And then you can start moving it out. Uh, there's a plastic cover on the front of the head back here. You have to have out of the way or it won't come out. This thing, I mean, it is just a, an absolute nightmare. Get it to here and twist around. Get this bolt out of it. See, look at that freaking thing. Then the bracket comes out. And the book says remove bracket. No, actually the book says pull the motor. Okay, with that bracket finally out of there, we can see you know, a lot more room. And I gotta pull this whole thermostat housing out and try to change around this bat wing monstrosity. All right, got the thermostat housing out. I'm turning my head a little bit so you don't see my light. Got the thermostat housing out and I'm ready to take the pump off. I've got the bat wing bolts out, the ones that stick out front and back. There, there's a few 10 and a bunch of 12s headed. There we go. But you have to take the pulley loose and knock it down because there are bolts behind the pulley. 
you cannot get the pulley out. So you have to just pull it off and drop it down, pull a bolt out, shove it over to the side, pull a bolt out. I think there's three bolts behind it. I'll show you this bat winged monstrosity where it flew away. Ah, there, it landed here. But you can see this freaking thing. Pulley sets over top of it. So you can't get to this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt. And I believe this bolt, I don't, yeah, I didn't take this one out yet. So, you know, 12, 12, like 12, and then 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12. Uh, these are bolts for the thermostat housing adapter. Okay, there's the bat wing monstrosity. Whenever you get ready to pull that out, you gotta slide the pulley back onto it to get enough room. It comes out, but barely. Now, it doesn't seem right, but this back end that looks like it, there's no way it can come up, you have to lever the back end up, take this and slide it off a little bit and then move it down and then work on it and lever that back end up to where it'll pick up out of there. It looks like this front end will tip out and go right up, but it won't. It catches too much stuff. And this conglomeration up here, the bat head, just doesn't work. So, And then when you're getting ready to put the new one in, don't forget to put the pulley on. You will hate yourself. Well, if I did it, I'd hate myself more than usual, but anyway. Okay, as usual, I get started on it and I forget to film steps. I got the new pump in. Uh, it goes back in the same way it came out by feeding the front end down in here and then tilting the back end into place. The problem is, first you have to have the pulley on it. Uh, you don't have to have bolts in, but you need to have the pulley sitting on it because you can't get it in there afterwards. But uh, there's almost not enough room to do that at all. So what I did was I fed it down in there without the gasket. Uh, mine came with a metal frame gasket that had laminated stuff riveted to it, but there was no pins or anything. So I just left the gasket laying on top of the motor, fed it all down in there, and then slid the gasket into place, stuck the bolts in. There's no dowels or anything. Then I changed my O-rings and put the thermostat housing back in place. I just got through putting the hoses back on. Now is a good time to wash everything all off from the antifreeze you've spilled and go ahead and put the belt on there because you got everything out of the way. You can get to it all a lot easier. And then I'll uh, yeah, kill a goat and, and sacrifice, you know, to whatever God you deem fit and see if I can get that mount back in place. Okay, uh, I got the belt and everything put on, all the bullies on down there. And I went to put this bracket back in and I was ready for, I mean, I was suited up. I had my boxing gloves on and everything. I'm ready to go. And I put the bolt in and I slid it down in here and I went jiggle, jiggle, and it fell into place. I worked on that for over an hour last night to get that one bolt out. I was completely drenched completely drenched. Pants and everything with sweat. I'm speechless. Okay, we're filling the system back up now. Got all the mount brackets and everything back in place. Uh, there is an air bleed down here, right there. You'll see it in the thermostat housing when you take it out. Makes filling it up a whole lot quicker. We've got this apparatus funnel here that locks into place. Uh, you can get it at Hobo Freight or off of any tool truck and it locks it into place. These things are a nightmare because they got this right angle underneath of them. It's a good investment to get a funnel like that. And you also 
have one of these, you can plug it off and then take the funnel out. What I do is I squeeze the hose and then stick the plug in. And then when you pick the thing up out of there, it doesn't overflow. Just an idea. Okay, that completes the job. We're all back together. Test run. I used maybe a quart of new antifreeze. I strained my old and put it back in. The toilet stuff's expensive and it's supposed to be lifetime anyway, so I just filter it and put it back in. Uh, everything looks good. That, that bleeder really helps because those stupid systems with the 90 degree in the top, they don't like to fill up very well. The customer's going to be happy that we didn't pull the motor and you know, hand him a four-figure bill. Like, comment, subscribe, hit your little bell notification, share it all around. We'll talk to you later.